Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132 on how to prepare for the first exam. So why have I decided to make this a video instead of just talking about it in class? In previous semester surties at the end of the year, several students commented that they would have preferred me spending class time on additional practice problems as opposed to discussing how to study and prepare for the course. But I'm starting to get some questions in my office hours and whatnot on, on how to study and that sort of thing, so I figured I would make a video as a nice compromise. So first things first is what is the point of the exam? Now this is discussed in your syllabus, but I think it's important, so we're going to go through it again. And this is frankly something that you should ask for every class. In this particular class, the point of the exam is that I want you to be able to take the knowledge and skills that we've been developing in class, which uses your homework as a starting point, and use that information to analyze new situations. The concepts and the problem skill solving skills that I'll ask you to use on the exam will be the same as what we've been doing, but the situations that you see will be new. So why is that important to understand? Well, understanding the purpose of the exam should inform your studying. So one of the purposes of the exam is for you to use the knowledge and skills you have been developing in class. And this goes back to the structure of this particular course, where the homework gets you ready for class, which gets you ready for the exam. So this really means something, because it means that the homework isn't meant to prepare you for the exam in this particular class. And the other thing is I'm going to ask you to analyze new situations. So will reviewing practice problems from class or doing the practice exam over and over help you do this? No, because if you're doing the practice exam, say, over and over again, you're memorizing solutions to problems you have already seen. And that's not what I'm going to ask you to do on the exam. So it's not really an effective study technique. So study what I'm going to ask you to do, which are new situations. And all of this relates to a common concern that a lot of people put on the little pieces of paper that I asked you to write on on the first day of class. So a lot of people said something along the lines of, I've heard that the exams are impossible and nothing like the homework. Well, a few comments on this. Solving problems is hard. Solving new problems is really hard. It's much harder than just recalling information. And because different people come to the class with different experiences, they're going to be able to solve different problems because of their different backgrounds. But that's what I want you to learn how to do in this class, is solve new problems that you haven't seen before. And since that's what I want you to do, that's what I'm going to test. But I don't expect perfection because it is hard, especially I think perfection is kind of unreasonable for an introductory course such as this one. So if you see on your syllabus, 72 on my exams is on track to be an A. This is my acknowledgement of the fact that the skill of solving new problems is hard. And so here's a distribution of the grades from spring 2018. And you can see that a good fraction of the students from last year were on track to be earning an A in the class based upon solely the first exam. So it's not impossible. The grades might be a little lower than you might be used to in, say, some of your other courses, but that's because I'm asking you to do something that's new and different and you might not be used to. And when you're new at something, it tends to be more difficult. And I want to acknowledge that in how I graded the course. So with all of that in mind, what are my recommendations for how to study? So first things first, let's talk a little bit about what not to do in order to prepare for the exam. So first off, don't focus on the homework and the reading too much. Remember, in this class, the homework isn't supposed to get you ready for the exam. The homework is meant to get you ready for class. So of course, go back to it if you find you have some gap in your understanding or something like that, but don't focus too much on the homework. It, it won't get you ready for the exam. Also, don't do the practice exam a bunch of times. Remember, we've already talked about this a little bit earlier in this video, but if you're going over the same problems over and over and over again, you're memorizing the solutions 
to problems you've already seen, which, as I've already mentioned, isn't what I'm going to test you on. I want you to be able to solve new problems. And so if you're going over the practice exam multiple times, what are you really studying doesn't match what I'm going to ask you to do. In a sense, you're practicing guitar for a piano recital. There's certainly some overlap in terms of, you know, basics of music theory and that sort of thing, but it's not going to prepare you as well as practicing piano would. So now that we've covered what you shouldn't do to prepare for the exam, what should you do? Well, a key, but not at all adequate step is to just make sure you understand your equation sheet. I think that this is the first thing. Now, I think most of you are already well on your way to this. I see you using it in class and whatnot, which is great, but that's the equation sheet you're going to get on the exam. So make sure you understand it. What does each symbol mean? What does it stand for? This is particularly important for those letters like P that can have multiple meanings in multiple different contexts. For each equation, what does it apply to? What does it not apply to? Not every equation can be applied in every situation, so make sure you know those limitations. And finally, which equations are the fundamental principles we use to start problems, and which are just definitions? This principle definition distinction is discussed in your book, and I would encourage you to review it because I think it's really important. In this particular unit, we kind of have three big principles. We have the de Broglie relation for converting waves to particles. We also know that the amplitude squared is related to the number of particles or the probability of finding a particle. And we know conservation of energy. Those are your big principles you use to start problems. Everything else is just a definition. Finally, make sure you know the math we expect you to know document posted to Moodle, which includes the SI prefixes from nano to giga, the surface area of a sphere, all that good stuff. Make sure you know the EM spectrum that's defined in your book. I think as scientifically educated people, you should know the order of the EM spectrum from radio to gamma. And also make sure you look at that, what will we learn in this class document that's posted to Moodle. You know, your test questions are pulled from those bullets. So go make sure that you can do those things. Finally, focus on what we did in class. Do you understand why we did the steps we did? What mistakes did you make while doing the problems in class? How will you avoid making them again? These are the things that you really should be focusing on. And then, of course, the additional practice problems that I've uploaded are there for, well, additional practice. If you need more practice on a particular topic, there they are. Go use them. Um, it, the answers are there. I, like I said in an announcement, I don't provide solutions because that actually tends to lower student grades. So I don't give them, but if you want help, you can go to the consultation room and get it. You can come to my office hours and get it. You can ask on Piazza, any of those things. You know, they're not graded. You can get help from anywhere. So some ways to begin studying, and you should do these before starting into doing problems, in my opinion. Look at the practice exam, but don't do it first. Remember, you only got the one. So once you've used it, you've used it. You don't have another one. Just get a feel for the format. It's, your real exam is going to look very similar. This will answer all those formatting questions. What's it going to look like? All that sort of stuff. Remember, during the real exam, you get two hours and a calculator. You don't get to bring your own equation sheet or crib sheets. The equation sheet you'll get is in attached to the exam and already uploaded to Moodle. It's the same one you had for your quizzes in class. So once you've gotten a feel for the exam by looking at the practice, now start thinking conceptually. Can you articulate the biggest ideas we've been talking about in class in your own words? Don't just repeat the textbook. Can you put them into your own words? Make them understandable to you. Try to explain them to a peer or one of your teammates. That's a great learning strategy. Can you make a flow chart that you can then use to solve any problem? You actually probably should be able to do that. You could imagine the first step being, should I start with de Broglie or should I start with conservation of energy? That might be your first step in your flow chart. That's totally doable, and I would encourage some folks to do that. Another idea is to make a concept map that looks at all the connections between the various ideas. Since we're studying wave-particle duality, all the concepts we've been talking about are very deeply intertwined. And a concept map, like I discussed in class on, I think, the third day, 
is a really good way to think about explicitly these connections for yourself. And then remember, I'm going to ask you to do new problems, like I've said a few times. So after studying, do some new problems. And this is interesting because I think the goal of doing problems is not to get them right. The goal of doing new problems is to keep making new mistakes. As you learn, you make new mistakes. That means you're learning, you're getting better. If you're making the same mistakes over and over again, you're not progressing. So I would highly encourage you to keep a log of your mistakes when doing problems and think really hard about why you're stuck, what mistake you made, that sort of thing. The mistake is never, I forgot this formula. And to be honest, it's rarely, I messed up that algebra. Y'all are actually much better at algebra than you give yourselves credit for. So why did you forget that formula? You know, usually there's a conceptual piece that you're missing. How will you avoid making it again? Keep a log of these. And hopefully as you go through problems, you'll keep making new mistakes, which means you're learning. Whenever you figure out your mistake, revise your summaries or your concept maps or your descriptions or, or whatever. Now you're in a positive feedback loop. You've created some knowledge, you've tested it, you found flaws in it, you went back, rebuilt, resynthesized, and now you're in this very positive feedback loop that will help you get better. After you've done some of these study activities and after you've done some practice problems to check your understanding, now do the practice exam, okay? This will help you identify what gaps you still need to fill in. I will say everyone, every semester says that the practice exam is easier than the regular exam. Even if this isn't objectively true, I have sometimes used past exam for practice when the course material doesn't change very much, not true this semester, but I have done it in the past. And so you can compare, you know, one semester to the previous and compare how people did on the practice exam versus the real exam. And even if the practice exam is harder, judging by the fact that the grades might be lower, everyone still says it's easier. And I think the difference here is stress, especially if you do the practice over a few days, relaxed, you know, with your peers and with your teammates, of course, it'll seem easier. So when you do the practice exam, try to replicate the exam conditions as much as possible. Go get one of those little study closets in the library, set a timer for two hours, see how you do. All right. And then that'll identify some gaps that you might know. Go back, fill them again, use that positive feedback loop and y'all got this. You can do this. I've been seeing the progress you've been making in class. It's good progress. We've got two more days of practice this coming week. Y'all got this.